How wonderful person this is Anton, and we finally have new updates in regards to the iconic Trappist-1 system that sort of looks like this, simulated in Space Engine. A very famous system announced by NASA in 2017 because, as we'll discover later, it contains seven terrestrial planets. Planets very similar to Earth in mass and in density, with four of these planets potentially in the habitable zone of the star system. In essence, implying that we might have discovered a star system with at least several planets that could, hypothetically, host life and maybe even be somewhat similar to planet Earth. At least that's what a lot of scientists hoped. But over the years, various observations from, for example, Hubble telescope and a lot of other observations from other telescopes, including mathematical calculations, started to produce somewhat contradictory results. On the one hand, many studies suggested that water could be possible here, with some of these planets potentially containing hospitable conditions, other studies proposing that some of these planets could be entirely different in terms of what's inside of the planets, but still contain rocky surface and maybe even water. And so for basically something like six to seven years now, scientists have been eagerly waiting for new results from the James Webb Space Telescope, because one of its missions was actually to take a look at some of these planets and to try to see if at least we can maybe see some atmosphere, because by detecting atmospheres, we could then determine what's on the surface and what's even possibly inside. And so several investigations have been already proposed in the last few months, and at least one was officially finished just a few months ago. You can find that video in the description, but in a nutshell, it was the investigation of the closest planet, TRAPPIST-1b, the one that's expected to be the hottest and the one that's not in the habitable zone. Here, the scientists discovered that it doesn't seem to contain any significant atmosphere that will be made out of hydrogen or carbon dioxide. It could still have some kind of a thin atmosphere that's different, but nothing substantial to suggest that this planet was in any way atmospherically active. Instead, what the scientists discovered is something very similar to Mercury. Probably dark, very likely extremely hot on one side and possibly cold on the other side, but larger and more massive in size. So maybe not the most exciting discovery, but a very important discovery nevertheless. And so now we have news from the second planet, planet TRAPPIST-1c. But before that, let's briefly talk about the star system, just so that you remember exactly what it is. So as so many other star systems in the Milky Way, this is what's known as a red dwarf. A star with a temperature of about 2500 Kelvin, which is much, much colder than the Sun, whose temperature is 5700 Kelvin. And it's a star system that's just under 41 light years away from planet Earth. But because this is a very dim red dwarf, it's actually really difficult to find it, and it only produces a fraction of the Sun's starlight. Here's roughly how the Sun compares to this particular star, both in terms of color and in terms of brightness. And so it's definitely much smaller. It's actually very similar to Jupiter in size, even though it's about 9% of the solar mass. And because of this, the planets here orbit much, much closer compared to the solar system, and actually somewhat comparable to the moons around Jupiter. A single orbit here takes anywhere from one and a half days to 19 days for the farthest planet. And because of this, just like around Jupiter, it's kind of assumed that a lot of these planets are very likely tidally locked, always facing with the same side toward the star, with one side being cold and one side possibly being hot. Now, it's not certain that this is exactly what happens, but it's the most likely explanation. But compared to the solar system, this system is actually older. It's probably 7.6 billion years old, at least 3 billion years old older than planet Earth and than the Sun. And so because these planets had over 7 billion years to evolve, it's quite likely that they're actually very different from anything in the solar system. But more importantly, this makes it a perfect target to see what happens to terrestrial planets around various red dwarfs. Here we have seven planets in different locations with different conditions, and so looking at all seven of them might actually allow us to describe the majority of similar planets in the entire galaxy. Today we know that quite a lot of these red dwarfs, or M-type stars, seem to contain similar planets and very often in very similar locations. So whatever happens here, very likely happens elsewhere. But it's the planets D, E, F, and possibly G that are the most exciting because, as you can see from this image, they're basically in that region where the habitable zone could be located. The conditions necessary for, possibly, liquid water. But in order to have liquid water, or any kind of habitability, you obviously have to have proper atmosphere. And so pretty much all of the first studies are going to be focusing on figuring out what kind of atmosphere these planets have by looking at the types of emissions they currently produce. 
And the way that it's done right now is by actually doing this. The scientists look at the planet orbiting the star in order to find minute differences in the reflections coming from the surface of the planet and by looking at what's known as the secondary eclipse, when the planet moves behind the star. And what this allows us to do is calculate the amount of mid-infrared light with a very specific wavelengths that seems to be coming from the day side of the planet. To be more exact, it's actually measured in microns, and James Webb is perfect for measuring 15 micron wavelengths of light. And the amount of mid-infrared light is directly related to the temperature on the surface, which is generally influenced by the atmosphere of the planet. To be more specific, carbon dioxide usually absorbs 15 micron light. And so, for example, if there was a very thin carbon dioxide atmosphere with no clouds, you would see a dramatic dip that you see right there in blue. If there was a very thick carbon dioxide atmosphere, you would see something similar to the yellow line. Here it actually is a Venus-like atmosphere with sulfuric clouds. Green suggests something that has no atmosphere, or basically barren rock, with the actual detection being the red dot. Here's a slightly more detailed version from the paper itself. And so what this kind of implies right now, based on the observations and the very thorough analysis from the paper, is that there doesn't seem to be anything. Or in essence, because carbon dioxide usually absorbs these specific frequencies, and nothing like that was observed in this case, the planet appears to be either barren or potentially contains very different atmosphere. Okay, so it doesn't actually mean that it's barren, it just means that it's very likely not Venus-like and not carbon dioxide-based. But there could still be some other options, including atmospheres that are just exotic. So for example, this could be a planet with an oxygen-dominated atmosphere, that would not be detected with this technique, but explaining the origin of this oxygen would be difficult. On Earth, it's usually produced by life, but generally we believe it's also produced by dissociation of water into hydrogen and oxygen. So that means that this planet would have to have water. But because of the proximity to the star, it's quite likely that this is actually a really hot planet. So the presence of water here would be very difficult to justify. On the other hand, it could also be ammonia or methane, similar to Titan. But once again, because it's so close to the star, these types of atmospheres would very likely be destroyed extremely quickly. So the methane and ammonia would have to be replenished by something like, for example, life. No evidence for any of this exists just yet. We could obviously have water-based atmosphere as well, but it's the same problem as before. Where is the water coming from, and how is it actually surviving here? So here you would actually have to have a really huge ocean on the surface for any of this to make sense. Because the star in this case is 7.6 billion years old, it's quite likely that these oceans would have to survive for a very long time, and based on the density calculations, at the moment this is not a very likely explanation. These are most likely rocky planets, and potentially do not have any oceans. The other option is hydrogen and helium, similar to Saturn and Jupiter, but these types of volatiles do not really exist for a very long time, unless the planet is really massive. So once again, quite unlikely. And the last but not least, or technically, the most important atmosphere, would be nitrogen-based. That's basically the atmosphere of planet Earth. Most of the atmosphere here is nitrogen. Now that would be kind of difficult to detect right now, and also we don't even know where nitrogen on Earth came from. Mostly because nitrogen is also not particularly stable, and does escape pretty quickly. And so because of the proximity to the star, it's also unlikely to be nitrogen. It's not going to survive for so long, unless there is a source somewhere replenishing nitrogen all the time. And so unless they contain nitrogen from the beginning, it's extremely unlikely to have that either. And so the most likely candidate here was always carbon dioxide. Very recently, NASA released this beautiful visualization of carbon dioxide cycle right here on planet Earth. And so if we could see how this gas propagates, this is sort of what it would look like. And in this case, CO2 usually radiates energy away pretty well, and doesn't actually escape the planet very easily. And so even though on a cold planet it can sometimes freeze turning into ice, it's still a lot more likely to exist, just like it exists on Mars, Venus, and planet Earth. And it's also relatively easy to see it on the planet, with telescopes like the James Webb. And through dissociation from the solar radiation, it can also turn into carbon monoxide and even ozone, basically providing a lot of necessary conditions for potential life. And so the initial hope here was to discover some kind of a sign of CO2 somewhere on the surface. But just like with TRAPPIST-1b, the extremely detailed observations revealed either no atmosphere or extremely thin atmosphere that's not going to be having any major effects on the surface. 
with the surface temperature measured to be approximately 170 degrees Celsius or 220 Fahrenheit, and the reflectivity showing us that it's most likely just barren rock and nothing else. Ok, it could be some kind of a interesting rock, but based on the reflection right now, it looks to be a little bit more similar to, for example, Mars than something similar to planet Earth. Although the actual observations do seem to be very different from what the scientists initially proposed and from what they initially simulated. It doesn't seem to resemble any planet the scientists imagined initially. And so with a relatively high surface temperature, and also being a third as massive as planet Earth and about 10% larger, it basically presents us with a very different world from anything we thought it would be. Potentially a large, massive, barren rock. Pretty hot on one side and possibly very cold on the other side. And so if there was any atmosphere, it would most likely redistribute some of this heat. In this case though, there doesn't seem to be any redistribution whatsoever. The temperature just doesn't change much at all, basically making this planet a kind of a supersized mercury. So two planets down, five to go. Now the first two were not particularly exciting to begin with, simply because they were just too close to the star. The next four though are very exciting. D, E, F and G are actually the planets that a lot of us are super curious about and the planets we're most likely going to be hearing about before the end of 2023. And so within the next few months, we're probably going to find out more about these planets and if maybe one of them contains something. And so I guess we're just going to have to be a bit more patient and let the suspense continue. But once we find out about the other planets, I'll make sure to follow this up in the next video. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.